okay you're welcome back to my youtube channel again today this day i'll be talking about different shading techniques just like i mentioned in my first video that was my welcome video i told you that there are many right ways of shading and then you can decide to hold your pencil whichever way suits you best and by that i mean the way you can hold your pencil and you'll be able to balance your pressures your pressure while you are shading so that you achieve a good result so the materials i'll be using in the video this moment are the Stedler 2b here's the 2b Stedler 3B, I'll be using the 3B also, and then the 6B, and I would like you to follow along. One of the mistakes you will make as an artist is that you always want to see YouTube videos and then think, oh, I'll act later, and then you forget. And by the time you come to realize, you find out that you have forgotten something. So, one of the ways you can learn better as an artist especially as an upcoming artist is once you are seeing the youtube videos have your pencils have your paper art and i was also sorry i didn't mention i'll be using the soft mounted brush also so once you are seeing the video what you should do is you should follow along take your pencil get your paper practice you can post the video along the line and Look at what you are not getting right, what you are getting wrong, and then in the comment section, you can let me know what your question is. And do not forget, if I start to subscribe to this YouTube channel, it promises to bring you value. You will sure learn from this, and I know you will improve your heart in 2022. So there are different techniques of shading, one of which is arching. So let's begin with arching. Arching. Now, let me also mention in each of the different shading techniques that I will be taking this morning, I would like you to note that I will not be using ash lines. Now, doing this, this is not the right way for you to do your shading. When you are shading, ensure that the pencil is releasing the lead, not that you are making use of lines. Let the pencil release the lead. That is the way you can shade and you achieve a good result. You will see the difference when you try this out. Let your pencils release the lead rather than making use of lines. So let's go back to the arching technique. So when we talk about arching, this is the way you go about arching. Well, I told you earlier, you can hold your pencil and anyway. just make sure your pressure is balanced. So let's start. Well, for me, personally, when I arch, what I do is to go in one direction. Yes, my hand may be kind of fast and you think, oh, I'm going back and forth. But no, I'm going in just one direction. This is what I'm doing. what I'm doing I'm not using lines I'm using the lead of the pencil so follow along but it may look like you are not seeing anything for now is because when I want to shade I allow my first layer to be very light so that it fills the teeth of the paper oh don't be surprised that even the papers have teeth so that they fill the teeth of the paper and you see that i'm maintaining the same pressure all along so let me make use of my blending brush you don't need to put pressure even on your blending brush when you are blending just lightly if you shade right, you won't need to 
put pressure to blend before you achieve your smooth tone so that's it let's continue let me go on to the 3b and i would love you to look to watch something here as i continue using the 3b i'm still using the same methods and we are still on arching but you see that this 3b if you look at it very well you find out that yes it's the normal thing it's I, it's grade is higher than 2b so but when you are shading you should know that yes you have a reference picture let your eyes be glued to your reference pictures while you are shading don't just keep shading and then you forget about your reference picture in this case now there's no reference picture because i'm just showing you the shading techniques now what i want to bring out from that is when you are shading one of the ways to get a good result is that you don't allow a sharp transition it should be sub to i will show you what i mean by that now let's look at this this is my 2b shading that i showed you earlier now let's let me use 3b now take a look at this me using my 3b close to where i shaded with 2b let me blend the two with my brush so that you see what i'm talking about it's preferable to blend from the darkest to the lightest so the 3 big grade is higher than 2 so let me start blending from here you see I, I told you earlier you don't need to apply pressure just lightly now you see that they are almost like going into each other and there's no demarcation it's i can decide so that you see it better let me shade it more here but what i'm saying is what i will show you next after this this is what I mean by being soft. You don't allow a very a sharp differenti differentiation between the two. You don't allow that. Now you see that you can really see a sharp demarcation between the two. Now, not something like this. I'll be very fast on this aspect. Let me bring in my 2B. Now, this is my 2B here. I'll blend that oh let's go with the 3b on the other side before blending this is 3b now let's blend the two going from the 3b to the 2b Now I will show you what I am talking about, about having a sharp demarcation between the two. Don't worry if this looks like it's not smooth the camera is very close to the paper and since i'm not using pressure to blend so you are bound to see the texture of the paper reflecting so don't worry about that you see even after blending this together with the 2b can you notice the sharp differentiation let me zoom for you so that you can see can you see that is a sharp a sharp differentiation between the two tones this is what you should avoid if you want to get a good result in your shading now let's get back to the action method
Don't forget, your pressure is very important in dealing with your shading. Maintain your pressure whatsoever way is convenient for you to hold your pencil and to maintain your pressure. That is what you should do. Well, for me personally, I can hold my pencil close to the tip and still maintain my pressure. I can hold it at the end and still maintain my pressure. So whatsoever way you can train yourself to maintain your pressure, to hold your pencil and to maintain your pressure, that is what you should make use of now just slight blending don't worry all these things i will put them into practice in a real drawing very soon just for you to lay the foundation so that you understand what i'm doing so let's leave action for now and let's go to the second method which is cross arching let's move on to cross arching so cross arching is basically arching in different ways cross arching let's begin just like i did for my arching going this way just like I told you earlier, personally I go in just one way, but my hand may look that fast, but don't be confused, it's just one way. Now, let's move on. This is it. This is still arching I'm doing now. This is it. You see that it is the lead of the pencil that I'm allowing them pencil to release I'm not using ash lines let's blend out its brush now you can decide to do the cross arching and then you blend after that but one of the things one of the ways to make your shading smooth is that if you are using the cross arching method arch first blend and then bring in your pencil again but now in a different direction you are still arching but you see what I'm doing still don't need to apply pressure then I come in with my blending brush to do the blending Now let me use the 6B so that you can see that even with an higher grade of pencil you can still balance your pressure. So you can decide okay let me not blend this time around and just come on up in another direction for blending so I'll blend now just slightly you don't have to apply pressure just like I said earlier you have to keep an eye on your reference pictures now if you still need to go darker you can always do that you can go in as many direction as you like just ensure that your pressure is balanced as the shade and decide to come this way
then I'll blend my brush so that's it for cross arching now let's go to the third one circulation so here's my 2b circulation is basically shading in circles just like you're shading in circles but you're still not using lines not lines like this you're using the shades the lead of the pencil that's what you're using but in circular motion and you don't have to strictly use a particular method in a drawing there have been instances where you would be drawing and then in a particular portion of the drawing you might want to use circulism at another point you want to use arching another point you want to use cross arching it all depends on your preference and how you deem it fit to use the different methods at different times so with my 2b shading now let me blend Okay, let me layer it with 3b this is a typical way you should shade when you are shading even a real portrait you don't go all dark at once you go in layers that way you, you see the difference in the results that you get if you go just once because oh it's dark let me just go once So here is 3B that I'm using to layer. So again, I blend with my brush just lightly. Okay, let me add a final layer which is 6B that I will use. In circles but not lines don't be bored just yet also and you see where we apply the cross arching technique well basically the arching and then cross arching techniques in the video for today maybe in some other videos you will see a real life usage of the circulation method so that's that on circulation now let's go to the last last one i'll consider today scribbling scribbling to be pencil scribbling simply means you shade in just any direction you like can decide to can this got this one just shade in whatever direction you like but you are still making use of the lead of the pencil don't forget so that way you can come in blend you can layer again 